Japan is a fascinating land of contrasts, from the ancient traditions and temples to the modern technology and transport. I'm going to spend all my money on the trip right now. My mate James and I are going to be traveling there for the very first time, giving ourselves one month to explore this beautiful country. Yeah, I just can't wait to get there and start experiencing Japan. Leave me less overload. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to look. <laughs> Welcome to Japan! Welcome to Japan! I love that enthusiasm and energy here. They're super happy to see you, they're bowing, super polite. Oh, dude! No. <laughs> you play with me! Ready for your first bullet train experience? I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> we are in Shibu Onsen to see the snow monkeys. Today we're exploring Kyoto on bikes. You have to do like this, see? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're a foodie, you'd love this place. We're not massive foodies, but we're still gonna have to give some of the things here a try. What is it? Oh, octopus ball. <laughs> we're gonna do VR Mario Kart. <laughs> then we're gonna actually ride Mario Kart later. <laughs> So much fun. There was a couple of things I wasn't expecting to do in Japan. One was go on a pirate ship. <laughs> That's what we were waiting for. Japan's one of those countries where it's never been a case of if I'll go there, it's just been a case of when. And I think the reason it's taken so long to get around to going there is because, you know, it's not really on the classic Asian backpacking trail, partly because of its geographical location, but also has this reputation of being really expensive. Hopefully that's a myth we can bust on this trip, but it's still a country I've always wanted to go to because ever since I was a kid, Japan's just been presented as like this frontier of futuristic technology. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. Unbelievable. So we're finally going to be gone there and I'm going to be traveling with James again and we've been talking about doing Japan for a while and we nearly went in the summer actually, it's just our schedules didn't quite align. And then I think it was in September that James said, right, he's going to go to Japan in January to go snowboarding for two months. And I was like, but, but I want to go to Japan, so I'm going with him. <laughs> so that's the reason we're going in January is because James wants to go snowboarding and he's going to be there for two months, I'm going to be there just for one because we're going to fly out together travel around for a month and then when I fly home he's gonna go off snowboarding for a month and the reason I'm not going snowboarding with him is one I can't really afford it right now two I suck at snowboarding and three since my shoulder still going through physio after dislocating it skydiving in the summer doing a sport where I'll be falling over all the time doesn't seem like the best idea. I was just having a thought Carl actually what you should be a spokesperson for is like travel insurance. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> Now the last trip we did together was in the Philippines and the problem we had on that trip was we tried to squeeze in too much because it takes so long to get anywhere in the Philippines. We spent most of our time just tired and exhausted from trying to get from one island to another. So I was kind of cautious with that when I started planning this trip around Japan, but of course Japan has the best infrastructure in the world. So I was starting to look at like distances and how long it takes to get from here to here. And I was like, oh, it's just two hours. You just get on the bullet train, you can get there. So. What that gives us is a lot of freedom to go anywhere we want. So from what I've read, the classic tourist stops for a short trip to Japan are like Tokyo, Mount Fuji, Kyoto and Hiroshima. And I'm sure we'll get to all of those, although I don't know in which order yet. But then I asked on my Facebook group and on Instagram, like, who's been to Japan and what suggestions have you got? So now we've got all these tips and ideas for other different things around the country to check out. So. We've booked the Japan Rail Pass for three weeks, which basically gives us access to the entire country. But ultimately for me, this trip really isn't about list ticking. I just want to experience some of the new side of Japan and hopefully experience some of the older side of Japan. And I don't know how easy or challenging this trip's gonna be. I don't know how difficult the language barrier is gonna be. I have no idea what the backpacking scene's like there. But it's nice, it's nice not knowing what we're gonna get ourselves into. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I will mention one last thing. It's a couple of weeks shy of it being exactly five years since we set off to do our HK2MY nine month round the world trip. And now, you know, we're a little older, we're a little wiser, but it's still essentially the same thing. It's just the two of us traveling with one camera, capturing our journey as we go and explore our new country. So yeah, I can't wait. We're heading to Heathrow first thing in the morning and flying out to Japan. From Heathrow, we first had to get a three and a half hour flight out to Helsinki in Finland. We then had enough time for a quick couple of pints before boarding the plane to Tokyo. This flight was going to be nine and a half hours, and our main goal was to try and at least get some sleep before we arrived in Japan the next morning. So we're off to a good start. We've literally just walked through security and immigration. I come out and James has been interviewed on Japanese, on Japanese TV straight away. Why did you come to Japan? TV Tokyo, Channel 7. Gave the YouTube channel a little plug as well. So Carl makes uh, travel documentaries uh, for YouTube. One of James's goals and ambitions for this trip was... Get on Japanese TV. We <laughs> thought it was going to be impossible. <laughs> Japanese TV. <laughs> <laughs> Take that off, we can go home now, we're all done already. Yeah. <laughs> Our hostel was located in the Ueno district of Tokyo, and since we arrived at 11am but couldn't check in until 3, we decided to explore the neighbouring area of Asakusa. Asakusa features the Sensoji Temple, an ancient Buddhist temple that's the oldest in all of Tokyo, dating back to the 7th century. And apparently, it's one of the most visited spiritual sites in all of the world, attracting over 30 million visitors each year. The problem with the start of a trip is you get on the plane and you're super excited, like, yes, Japan, let's go. Then you get off the plane and you're super exhausted from jet lag, so your mind's like, let's go, but your body's like, no chance. This basically meant we spent the afternoon wandering around like zombies. But after a few hours of sleepwalking around, we finally got to check into our hostel and freshen up. This is our hostel and in terms of hostel beds, you cannot ask for anything better than this. We have privacy curtain, got a towel rack, clothes rack, security locker, personal plug, lamp, everything you can ask for even. But if there is a fire, <laughs> The problem is we have to do some kind of die-hard maneuver where you're supposed to attach some rope and kind of abseil down. Yeah. You can somehow link a rope on there and climb all the way down there. Five floors, isn't it? Dodging the electric wires. We can try it. Yeah. We're in our hostel, Bedgasm, getting our free drink for the evening, which is great. Oh, oh, oh my god. <laughs> do you guys know Gimli? <laughs> <laughs> like... But then I asked them what was this drink they had behind the bar. <laughs> what is this? What have we got here? <laughs> this is Japanese killer V and a snake. <laughs> With sake. <laughs> With sake. So every year, like uh, 20 or 30 Japanese people die because of the wasp. This was. But why do you mix it with... Yes. Why? What is that? They say uh, still uh, like poisonous, but a... The, like a little bit of poisonous make the dark or like the... British feather. Uh, good? Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> what they say. <laughs> <laughs> what? Medicine, no, yeah, like give medicine. you energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives you energy? Yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have our first sake of Japan and we're going all in with a snake and killer bee sake. sake. <laughs> Weird sake. Wondering what we've signed up for here. This <laughs> yeah. Japanese killer bee. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Kai, you gotta give him a kiss before you drink it. <laughs> oh, drink him. You sip them though, right? You yes. don't, we don't, yeah, we're not gonna you, you, gotta, you can't leave him hanging. Look at him, he's like, I'll give him a kiss. Guy's arm I'll give him a kiss. Going, Look, I've been waiting here for ages for someone to come and kiss me. <laughs> you can't let him down. <laughs> this and snake. Here you go. No snake in yours, though. Uh, <laughs> you ready, mate? <laughs> Give me a kiss. Oh, oh, first kiss. <laughs> first kiss of Japan. <laughs> oh, we know why. That's quite How's nice, actually. It's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's try a little bit of a kick to it. I'm not much of a spirit person, but that's 
Oh, it's a lot better than I thought. That's Not really better. sweet. Yeah, it's good. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what my snake one's like. Your snake biting black. <laughs> B one's better, actually. B one's better. Yeah, I, I win. Think so. Really? Do you not want to give him a kiss as well? <laughs> <laughs> you right, mate? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it back in your tree. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah. Put it, I'll try to put it in your hand. We go and have a few days exploring Tokyo to start off our trip, and so we were keen to get up the next morning and start exploring the town. But unfortunately, jet lag had other plans. I say that's like what going out to a plan for today. It's um, it's, it's three o'clock. <laughs> Shinjuku. We we're heading to Shinjuku, which is one of Tokyo's main business, entertainment, and shopping districts. This is a lot more of what we had in mind when we thought of Tokyo, rather than the chill that area we're staying in. Shinjuku features countless different bars, restaurants, a red light district if you're into that sort of thing, and even a restaurant with a robot show. However, you have to book tickets in advance to go there, and since we were getting hungry, we just picked another place at random to get some food. It's our first Japanese restaurant, and we have no idea what we're doing, <laughs> but we're just trying to wing it. We managed to order beer, so we did that bit, all right? Because we're messy eaters. Hey. So I've gone for the staff recommended meat selection. And she explained to me what these three meats are, but I obviously didn't understand what it meant. I hope it's cooked enough. <laughs> Got no one to blame but myself. Everyone loves chicken balls. <laughs> How am I supposed to pick them? What are these up? Well, I go for the little one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it is like to be the biggest. the entire chicken. <laughs> oh. Oh, my. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just like KFC. <laughs> hey, we're about to go to the Samurai. <laughs> about to go to the Samurai Museum. <laughs> We weren't allowed to film inside the Samurai Museum, but we could take as many pictures as we liked on the guided tour. The Samurai were an elite military class of soldiers and officials that existed for over a thousand years in Japan up until 1868. Within that time, their roles changed and were more varied and complex than perhaps our cliched Western depiction of them. But essentially, the word Samurai means one who serves, and they followed a strict code of conduct known as Bushido, or the way of the warrior. All right, we have just done the Samurai Museum. We got to try on the Samurai costumes as well as learning all about it, and that was awesome, so I definitely recommend coming and doing it. And now we're gonna get drunk. We got Aussies, so that's all we need to get drunk, <laughs> yeah. we got Aussies. <laughs> we were heading to Golden Guy, a popular nightlife spot in Shinjuku that's comprised of 200 tiny little bars crammed into six narrow alleyways. And who's your Aussie mate we're meeting? Casey, we met two years ago in Honduras. In Udilla. Ooh, Udilla. Oh, what is this? It's okay. You gotta drink it like a cat though. Yeah. 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 Easy come, easy go, we do let me go. Big man, I know. We're gonna let you go, let me go. So this is Golden Guy, which is Everyone recommends coming for a night out here in Tokyo. Cool little street, lots of little tiny bars. Going to be fit about ten people in. Ten. That was a weird question. Is it full of people? Like, there's ten seats. Now, different bars have different deals on because some of them you have to pay a cover charge, although you often get stacks with that, and some of them you just get them for free. International tourists are no charge. Not Shit. suspicious. <laughs> What's this? Not a suspicious bar. <laughs> no charge, no tax, one drink, all 800. That makes it even more suspicious. <laughs> should we go in? <laughs> Thing is, even if you're coming to buy like this and it's empty and dead, they're so small that they'll just be filled up with buzzing in no time. <laughs> See, what I love about traveling is uh, meeting the locals. Where are you from? Hey! This one? Yeah. It's called so, that one. I don't know what the fuck's <laughs> going on. Drunk Where are you from? Ah, uh, the States. Whereabouts? <laughs> well, there's, like, there's, like, there's like 10 of them in there. <laughs> yeah, there's 50. Ah, oh, 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Georgia. You know, it's always good interacting with them and getting their 
local experience and what's happening. Don't go straight up there! <laughs> 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 nice to meet you, man. You guys take care. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> oh, it's full. It's full. <laughs> that looks like fun. Bye. Mina! Gunsai! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! <laughs> yeah. What do you call this? What were you calling it? What is it? Tiny, tiny girl. Tiny, tiny girl. Tiny, tiny girl. So small, so small. Tiny, tiny girl. So small, yeah. <laughs> We love tiny girl. <laughs> I love tiny girl. You right? Yeah. You're tiny, you're tiny. <laughs> Where does the girl come from? Tiny, tiny girl. <laughs> That's so satisfying. It fills me up so much. <laughs> you like skiing? I love skiing. <laughs> I love skiing. Slow on. You like slow on? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> We had a really fun night in Golden Guy, but there's still loads more of Tokyo we want to see. And the next place on our list was Akihabara. Stimulus overload, like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to look. <laughs> Akihabara is Tokyo's electric town, housing thousands of electronic stores, selling every gadget imaginable, including tons of retro video game consoles. In more recent years, it's become the center of Japan's otaku culture, die-hard fans of anime and manga. Don't know anything about anime really, so you're not getting any expert advice, but it's a pretty crazy place. Full random electronics and old games and geeky stuff to buy, so we're gonna have a little wander around. James wants a doll that looks like it's crying. Oh my god. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Two teenage girls washing each other. Get, get, a, get a creepy towel. I don't feel a lot of money. It's rubbish, nice. <laughs> I lost the life so I shot that guy. <laughs> Mario so much. He's a Mario. So this is a super potato store with all the old video games. Uh, sort of stepping back in time. As the first computer Sorry. game system I ever had. I had the original Pac-Man. I don't Nice. It's like every game for every console ever made. Oh god. We gotta have a game made. <laughs> Coming for you, Lee. <laughs> It's yes. a bridge! <laughs> Final fight! Final fight. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Just dances. Basically nerding out here, they have uh, lightsaber chopsticks that light up. You know I'm going to get them. But also, We've got a full-size Back to the Future car. Oh, you got to get that. Mate, you're, you're going to have no money left. I'm going to spend all my money on the trip right now. It's like, Carl, were well, you sensible with your money on your trip? Because it's quite expensive in Japan. What's that, 26 quid? Even better than that, i got a lightsaber chopsticks and a Back to the Future car. <laughs> Everybody needs a tit. <laughs> The James cab. What does James discover in the film? <laughs> hey, you guys! I <laughs> stole <laughs> <laughs> <all> my money. <laughs> and there's these maid cafes around here as well that um, we might check out, even though they seem a bit suspect. Where are we gonna eat tonight? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's basically waitresses dressed as maids who obviously serve you food and drinks, and I think they do a bit of a dance and a sing song. But there's loads of them out in the street just trying to get you to go in the cafe. So I think we're gonna go check them out. Bye bye. <laughs> this is the sketchiest lift ever to go to. 
the May Cafe. <laughs> we don't know if this is cool. Oh. <laughs> this is the May Cafe. <laughs> May Cafes are quite famous for Tokyo. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I don't know if this thing is just fun and cute or if it's a bit seedy. So far, it just seems fun and cute. But um, we weren't allowed to film the maids, but um, we're allowed to film each other. That sounds wrong already. But um, <laughs> so we got a set menu, so we get like a food, dessert, drink. And a gift. So I'm about to eat a teddy bear. <laughs> so we have to do these chants before like each drink and each bit. Delicious, delicious, yum yum. But this was delicious, magic, bear, bear, cow. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily I've got some new chopsticks to eat my meal with, so uh, here we go. Now, if that was something in Thailand, you might be worried it'd be a bit seedy and a bit creepy, but here it was actually quite sweet and innocent. It was like being inside like a kid's computer game or something. <laughs> this dessert basically sums up this place. <laughs> uh, it was great fun, great fun. So. We came here to do some batshit crazy random things, and it's exactly what we've just done. Well, good morning from Tokyo. We're going through waves of jet lag, so sometimes it'll buzz in, and other times, like. But now we're at the, I guess it's like the Piccadilly Circus or Times Square equivalent of Tokyo. Shibuya Crossing is world famous. I want a, a live demonstration of the. Crossing. I'm going to so go cross works. and then diagonal, mate. I'm going to make it spectacular. Nice. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you can't even ask me on the line. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is going to be in the highlight reel. Ow. <laughs> it's pretty mean, though. Like, it's pretty mean. Everyone crossing in and out. Do it. <laughs> Spot the tourists who cross like three times in one go. We spent the next couple of hours walking from Shibuya up through the park to see the Meiji Shrine and then back to Shinjuku to go up the free observation tower that's at the top of the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. Normally when you come to an observation tower it's like, ah, oh, it's cool, it's a city from a pipe. Then you, you quickly dumb, but it's pretty impressive just how sprawling the city is. It goes on and on and on. And if we're looking like absolute shit, it's because jet lag's hit, this jet lag's hit is pretty bad today. <laughs> what are you doing, mate? You're not allowed to drink on the streets. You have to drink only by the vending machines. You have to finish it all and then put it in the bin before you leave. But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Japanese etiquette. Yeah. <laughs> I just won't drink on the street. <laughs> we'll just stop in at uh, individual vending machines. <laughs> <laughs> Pit stop. <laughs> Previous stop was just there. I'm now still, I'm still thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, nicknamed Piss Alley. It's where everyone comes to get pissed after work. The local, apparently. Yep. Do you want to get something? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind, actually. <laughs> Put us on a moon again, Carl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. have to get some uh, warm sake. Ha ha ha. Oh, you got I may as well try a little bit. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> It is hot though. The hot sake <laughs> is hot. It's like a, um, it's like mulled wine. Ugh. I haven't taken the sake yet, and I really don't like mulled wine, but I'll give us a try. Actually, I prefer to regular sake actually. It's not as bad as I thought. I was breaking for the worst, but. Not too bad. Is it like mulled wine or is that just my twisted logic? My like twisted logic. Because <laughs> mulled wine is just oh, the worst. Alright, what we got? What we got? What we doing? What we doing? Ah, uh, virtual reality games. We're gonna do VR Mario Kart, then we're gonna actually ride Mario Kart later. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Mario. <laughs> Neither of us have ever done virtual reality before, so this is gonna be 
absolutely sick. I don't know how well it's going to translate to video, but it's going to be really good fun for us. Okay, you're happy now. Don't get away. Hey! That was Mario. Oh, brilliant, mate. That was just like a fun theme park ride, just whizzing around. I can't find any of this stuff. Oh! Oh! these massive jumps, you're like. Oh! Then you gotta try and grab different objects out of the air and throw them at your opponents. Then you grab a hammer and it's whacking people out of the way. Somehow managed to win, I don't know how it's behind most of the way. Come on, come on, come on! Mario, congratulations! You have won! Yes! <laughs> Mario wins! So much fun, so much fun. We're about to get in a wheelchair to escape from a terror hospital. A hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and the weapons we have are a flashlight. I'm it's guessing got... if you shine it on their face, they run away. Just going around in a wheelchair. It's a shame that the thing we've enjoyed the most so far, you're not going to be able to enjoy at all. <laughs> that was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, that was intense. I shit myself. <laughs> not like actually, but nearly. <laughs> <laughs> like, we got to do this one. <laughs> we got to do this one. <laughs> That is so much fun. Yeah. The time, imagine when you get to the point where you're just able to go to an arcade and just stick with them on and have a go. Man. It's going to be unbelievable. Oh, if there's yes. one thing that I'd never thought would be virtual reality, it would be fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got a fish, he's got a fish! We had one last thing to do in Tokyo before we left town tomorrow. Because we've had a go at playing original Mario Kart, we've just tried the brand new virtual reality Mario Kart, but now it's time to do real life Mario Kart. We're about to do Mario Kart, which is one of the things I saw on Facebook a while ago thinking we have to do it in Tokyo. <laughs> so now we're doing it. You ready, mate? I'm always ready. I'm born ready. <laughs> It's very important to know we're doing Mario. We're not doing Mario Kart because that's copyright infringement. We're doing Mario Kart. Hey, yeah, yeah. 200 yen from a stash, so we'll just have to pretend. I'm so happy that we're actually doing this, though. Looking good. Knees are ready. Woo! This is awesome. Do fucking Mario Kart! Woo! We've missed the lights. <laughs> Are you ready? It's gonna face oh. off, mate. <laughs> oh yeah, drag race. <laughs> Beautiful sunset in Tokyo. Mario Kart going so far. <laughs> As you can see, I'm winning by a tire. <laughs> Lose it! <laughs> Just on a quick pause of the Mario Kart tour, right by the Sky Tree. The best thing is, as you're driving along, everyone just waves at you. They're all like, hey! It's a Mario! We're basically celebrities in town because everyone waves at you, takes photos. This one. You want to go in front? You hear that camera? I'm letting him win. <laughs> Oi, what are you doing? That was freaking yeah. awesome. That oh, was brilliant, mate. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we did it at rush hour. This is a bit stop and start sometimes. Basically trying to work our way through Tokyo rush hour, doing Mario Kart. Luigi, why the traffic's so busy? <laughs> Once you got going, it was freaking amazing. And the case you had to have a moment to go like, wait a minute, we're driving around Tokyo dressed as Mario doing my life Mario Kart. Yeah. We're in the posh area of town. 
It doesn't get much more crazy than this. Yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Unbelievable. Loved it. It was such a great way to end our time in Tokyo. Tokyo Drift. <laughs> we could easily spend a year in this city and still be finding new things to do, but it was time to move on and begin exploring the rest of Japan. All right, so first day of probably hitting the road, or hitting the train, I should say. We've got our first ever bullet train today, which is pretty exciting, but um, what we have to do, we bought a Japan rail pass, and then if you want a ticket, you have to go to the ticket office and just tell them where you want to go, and they give you a ticket, no penny extra money. There and then, so uh, this is pretty exciting. Like a bullet train is the kind of thing I've been hearing about ever since you were a kid. Ready for your first bullet train experience? I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> For our first stop, we were heading towards the Japanese Alps to the city of Nagano. And then we'll be spending the next week looping our way around to Kyoto. One of the things I wanted to get on film on this trip was the Japanese toilets because they're pretty <laughs> spectacular. With, you know, in Southeast Asia, you get the square guns to clean yourself, they don't use toilet paper, but here it's a whole different thing. And of course, how do you film that without being crude or, you know, normal to see you doing a shit? But then luckily, James went to the toilet and filmed it anyway. So it's so <laughs> crazy Japanese toilets. You know, I used to have to encourage James to film, but now he's just, you know, he's got the initiative now and just went and did it. All right, just arrived in Nagano, and once again, we're already on TV. Mate, I think it's all inside and you see so look. <laughs> hey, I got a monkey face. That's why Japan is fun. <laughs> I want TV. Yeah. <laughs> we dumped our bags at the hostel and went to see the nearby Zenkoji Temple. So we just learnt <laughs> it's the oldest temple in Japan. I think she said it was 1400 years old. Yeah, that's not quite right. It's one of the oldest in Japan dating back to the 7th century, and it houses the first Buddhist statue ever to be brought into Japan when Buddhism was introduced here in the 6th century. Well, like a lot of temples that you visit, you're not allowed to film inside or take any pictures, but underneath the temple, there's a passageway you can go down, and it's complete and utter darkness. You have to keep your right hand on the wall the whole time, and you go on basically through a maze, and then eventually you have to find this metal bar that metal bar is like the doorway to paradise. If you manage to find it and touch it, it means you'll be allowed in later on. I think that's what it meant. But it was kind of like an act of faith, really, because you're just walking in the dark, and literally no idea where you're going, and it's not a straight line. You're weaving around and just hoping that you'll, you'll get out and eventually find the key, which we both did. And the monks got a nod of approval and a little chat with the monks. Yeah, the monks gave us a nod of approval on the way out. So you well done. Key. You found I the key? See it in your face. Yeah, yeah. Happiness. Along with Buddhism, the other major religion of Japan, which is the indigenous faith, is Shinto. Shinto is a bit different to many monotheistic religions, as there are no absolutes. There is no absolute right or wrong, nobody is perfect, but ultimately, it's an optimistic faith believing that humans are fundamentally good. Well, then what was it you learned about the religion? Oh, that there is no, they have no, what was it, holy book? no God, and it's just about um, living within heart and harmony with nature. What was the one? Sacred Heart or something like that. Yeah. There you go. So it's not all just drinking and Mario stuff. <laughs> so as we just read, this is a war memorial holding the ashes of 2.4 million people who've died in war over the last 150 years. We spent the rest of the afternoon exploring the town a bit more, and then the following morning we boarded a bus to do a day trip to the small village of Shibu Onsen. Progress in our learning of Japanese culture. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. I think red means hot, cold means blue means cold. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to press that one. <laughs> oh, at least a nice warm cup of tea. Nice. <laughs> Very British of me. We are in Shibu Onsen to see the snow monkeys, and I said this trip wasn't about ticking things off lists, but this is one of the things I wanted to do. 
Um, it's interesting though that when you read bl blogs online, how they could be a bit misleading because I sort of heard about these snow monkeys as if it was like this little hidden secret. Oh, if you go to Nagano, you can get a bus, a train, a bus walk, and you can find these mo snow monkeys. So as soon as we got to Nagano, every person said, Ah, oh, snow monkeys, you have the snow monkeys? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So much so, we have a snow monkey pass. Are you ready? You can rent crampons, chest hiking boots. Got my hiking boots on. <laughs> these still vans? Yeah, these are vans. Vans, send James some free vans. <laughs> He's the biggest van adventurer in the world. <laughs> It was a 1.6 kilometer walk through the forest to where we'll hopefully see the wild Japanese macaque monkeys who often bathe in the hot springs to keep warm during the winter. We made it to the village and we got our first monkey. That was one down the water there. This is a beautiful little village though, gorgeous. What are they got in there, King Kong? Giving our complimentary free sticker, ready for the park. <laughs> well, there's tons of monkeys around but there's only one actually in the bath and now there's none so we're pretty lucky to see that. There he is, he's just coming. This guy's thinking about it. It's a bit too mild today for them to go in the hot tub during the middle of the day, which is a shame, but like I said, they're in the wild, you can't control them, so tough luck for us, but still really awesome seeing them. off as always. Just stopped in this cozy little restaurant called the Farmhouse. They've got 13 of their own different kinds of beers here and they're not messing around. Hey, how's that beer? Hello. Cheers mate. It's gonna be strong mate. Yeah, eight percent. Very hips you look very hips to be craft beer in your hat on. <laughs> I'm stash, don't I? I'm working on my beard at the moment. <laughs> you can tell. You're wearing slippers. <laughs> oh, these are just my going out shoes. <laughs> I, I left my hiking boots at the door. <laughs> Back in town after the snow monkeys, ready for our favourite musical crossing. Happy New Year. <laughs> 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 this is brilliant. <laughs> We'd worked up a bit of an appetite from our day out, so we decided to order ourselves some ramen. Good. <laughs> Noodles. <laughs> Basically like Japanese fast food though, this came out in like two minutes. Sat down, beer, noodles, ready to go. As we tucked into our food, the guy sitting next to us was keen to try and strike up a conversation. Can you do that? <laughs> no. No? Icky. Icky. Does that mean drink? Mm. I've been instructed to Icky. 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 かわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりかわりか
No, 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 no. Tikki. Oh, you want me to down it? No. Come on. Samples. Samples. Ah. Woo. No, no, no. Damn it. No, slowly, slowly. No, 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 no. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Japanese. Right. Now it's Carl's turn. I'm not confident about this at all. Three, two, one, go. Oh, there's no way I'm gonna win this. Kawaii. 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 Just <laughs> one on the technicality there. So. Kampai. Kampai. Iki. 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 When the guy eventually left, he ended up paying for all of our drinks. So we went for a wander around town to see what else the night would offer. Come on, what? Yeah. My name is Yocha. Yocha. Welcome to Chicago. Best place in Nagano. Thank you. And you, sir, James? Like James Bond? Yeah. Oh, secret. That was awesome. James is tall because the Japanese toilets. Very different to the rest of Asia. Toilet paper goes in the toilet. <laughs> We're making friends in Japan. <laughs> you from Nagano? No, no, no. No, where Guatemala. you from? Guatemala. Yeah, yeah. You from Guatemala. Nagano? Nagano? Karuizawa. Karuizawa. Where's that? Uh, oh. No, 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 no. Where? Uh, Japanese. Japanese. I know, Jap I know Japanese. <laughs> As the evening progressed, we met loads of people who wanted to try and chat with us and share some drinks. And so what started out as going for an innocent bowl of ramen ended up in a bit of a drunken mess. Despite all this, we still managed to get up straight away the next morning and boarded a bus to take us up into the mountains to the ski resort of Hakuba. We are in Hakuba. This is where James is going to go snowboarding in the trip when I go home. But we thought we'd come here for a night just to check it out. So one, he can scope it out. But two, because Casey and Corey met up with a golden guy, they're staying here. And also my buddy Max is here in town. So I thought we'd catch up with him. More about Max later. Awesome being up in the mountains. You know, just a couple of days ago, we're in the madness of Tokyo, and now we're surrounded by snow, beautiful trees, beautiful mountains. So, yeah, good to have a change of scenery. We're really happy to be here. Because we booked it last minute, it's like only one hostel we could get, and it's a lovely hostel, but it turns out it's about an hour's walk from the main bit of town, so we're gonna have to get like a train or a shuttle in. So it's Friday evening and we're just <laughs> heading into town. Me and James gonna catch up with Casey and Corey and Max and um, yeah, just walking to the train through this beautiful little village. Um, I'm really looking forward to having a nice, pleasant, civilized evening out. I'm, so, I'm sure James is as well. <laughs> <laughs> See, our hostel is conveniently located just a short train journey away from where we actually wanna be. <laughs> This is Carl's planning tips. <laughs> if you ever go travelling with Carl, don't. <laughs> Carl's become a train spotter. <laughs> Every platform we go to, he's filming trains. Which one is this, Carl? Have you given it a name? This is a train to Hakuba. Which what, What's the train called? Hakuba Matata. <laughs> what a wonderful place. <laughs> <laughs> Ninja James. <laughs> so this is what Hakuba actually looks like. <laughs> it's where we should Not have been. One hour walk that way. <laughs> Another thing to note, the train station's not near the town either. So it's a 10 minute walk from Oslo train station and a 10 minute train ride and another 10 minute walk to Hakuba. 
We had a very fun night out last night in Akuba. It's a bit of a strange town because it felt like we've been transported out of Japan and to Australia. So we're in Japan, but we're surrounded by Australians. Everyone who works here is Australian. Everyone who's in an Australian, apart from us, commies as they'd say. So here we have a uh, faint Anjane grenade. Like one of the barmans had the nickname for the place. Instead of a Kuba, it's a Kubali. <laughs> we're about to meet Max as well, who's the ultimate Aussie anyway. So here's yeah, the third team. Me and James went around the world in HK to him. Why? We got to Australia, we sailed the Witch Sundays, and the captain called Max, the British defender. Fuck legend. This summer I was back in Australia, I got on the boat and he said you would be on the British Defender. It turns out Max was still the captain, so I got to meet with Max again. Three times, more fun at all times. Yeah. <laughs> now we're in Japan, in the Cuba. Max is back! He's back! He's back! He's back! He's back! He's back! He's back! But it was good fun. It was like just like almost like a little break from our Japanese adventure. Just we transported to Australia for the night. Three times more fun at all times. A Cuba Matana! What a wonderful phrase! It's our problem free. A Cuba Matana! A Cuba Matana! <laughs> We wanted to stay an extra night, but everywhere's sold out, which means uh, we're gonna have to check out and get on the train to the next town, which is uh, gonna be a bit tough because we're both very hungover. Our train to Kanazawa isn't for a couple of hours, so this is around the corner from the hostel. When you're having a chilled, hungover day in Japan, <laughs> one thing to do is just come to an onsen. This is an onsen. It's basically a natural hot spring, hot tub area. And I'm filming right now because there's no other people in here and I don't want to film other naked men. So I'll just chill, relax. The next stop we're going to is Kanazawa and it's supposed to be a really beautiful old town on the coast and from what I read, not many foreign tourists go there. Although what I read could be complete bollocks so we'll have to find out. Maybe we'll end up at a bar full of Aussies again, who knows. It was a three hour journey to Kanazawa which firstly consisted of taking two different trains to weave us through the mountains. And then once we reached the coast, we could get on the Shinkansen bullet train to speed us to our destination. All right, we have made it to Kanazawa. Check out this station. It's unreal. It was a beautiful train journey through the mountains, actually, really, really nice. And after sort of the mayhem and debauchery of last night, tonight we're just going to chill the hostel, have a quiet one, and then explore this awesome town, or what I hope is an awesome town tomorrow. But if this station is a sign of how beautiful the town's going to be, I think we're in for a treat here. Apparently, we're lucky to have good weather today because. Just two days ago, they had like a foot worth of snow. There's a foot, there's snow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're heading towards the old Geisha district of town. Geisha are traditional Japanese female entertainers who act as hostesses. These old entertainment districts were filled with tea houses where they were performed to their customers. So this is Eastern Pleasure District called Higashi. Uh, where in the evening people will be entertained by geishas in the form of music and dance. We have to come back here in the evening apparently, so have stuff on. Great castle of Kanazawa. It's called Kanazawa Castle. This castle was originally built in the late 16th century, but has since been destroyed several times by fires and even an earthquake, the last of which was in 1881. The grounds were then used for Kanazawa's university until they moved to the city's outskirts in the 1990s. 
And now, the version of the castle we see today was only restored and reopened to the public in 2001. It looks like they had all the rocks lined up, like see there, on the gate. Dropping down for foundations. That's a complete end. That's how it starts. Bamboo and ropes. Mud kind of stuff. Finished. A frozen moat. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Arigato. Yeah, yeah. Looks like we've timed our lunch break pretty well because the storm is coming. We have seen pissing it down, so there's still more things we want to see, but for now we might be stuck here. <laughs> Apparently in Japan it's a thing to have eggs on pizza. So I know look at the cuisine, look at shake it. It's the bane of our lives in Japan, no jaywalking. <laughs> Walk to the its lights all the time. <laughs> Japan's the exact opposite to the rest of Asia. The rest of Asia you just kind of walk for it and go. Here you have to actually wait for the traffic lights. <laughs> See I went too quickly, now we're separated. I'll see you in a minute James. <laughs> I'll see you soon, stay strong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Three hours later, we're reunited. <laughs> Sign translates as men with hat cannot cross the road. <laughs> we've made it to the Nagamache samurai area through the rain. Now it's stopped raining, and we got here. Nagamache is a beautifully preserved area that was once the residential district for the city samurai. Much like the castle, it's also been through large amounts of restoration, but it still gives a vivid idea of what city life was like a century or more ago. Well, when we are in the Geisha district, uh, we thought there's no one there, and that's just because we're on the wrong street, and suddenly turned a corner and everyone was there. But here, there really is no one here, and it's probably because it's been pissing with rain. Jedi samurai used to live there. The Jedi samurai. <laughs> Jetty. <laughs> yeah. It's like an yeah, anagram. It's good work. <laughs> well, we've had sunshine, rain, seen a lot of snow and even hail today. But well, we've seen all the sights, so now we just need to find a place of refuge for the rest of the day. Making friends in Japan! The bar that was open. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we eating? Uh, uh, pork. 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 Uh, uh, pork and cabbage. And hot chili. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Is it spicy? I'm waiting for it to kick in. It's okay so far. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing at your chopstick skills, Carl. I've just had two. Go, Carl. Go, Microphone. Microphone. Yeah. Say hi to the camera. Hi. <laughs> well, I was expecting the worst, but it's okay. I'm, I'm feeling it a bit now, but it's it's okay. I'm surviving. Okay. Yeah, good. James trying. Yeah. He's okay. <laughs> so just learn karai means hot. But if you put hot into Google Translate, you get hot as in she's hot. <laughs> Wrong hot. It's <laughs> <laughs> my Japanese teacher. Karai kedo oshi. Karai kedo. Karai kedo oshi. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. See, learning. You look like Tom Cruise. Did you think I look like Tom Cruise? You <laughs> are. She says I look like Tom Cruise. Hi, Chris. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Continuing James's tour of Japanese toilets. Very nice. Lots of uh, ornaments. 
but no piss in standing up. Looks like they've got to have a sit down. Sit down toilet. Goodbye. We went in there and just everyone wanted to chat to us. They're like, let's join their group. And um, that's what I found so far on this trip. The Japanese people have been so friendly, so welcoming, so polite. And um, like, even if you just go into like a 7-Eleven to buy a Coke, you know, they're kind of bowing and saying hello and then they give you money back. And you know, it's such like a warm, friendly feeling. It makes you feel so welcome, which I love. Today we are heading to Kyoto and this time we're traveling on a Thunderbird. Let's go, James. Let's go. I'm just sorting his life out. <laughs> we were really looking forward to getting to Kyoto. It's the place that everyone tells you to go to when you first visit Japan, and we're going to have a few nights here to explore the town. Today we're just going to have a little wander around, see how far we can get, check out some sights, then tomorrow we're going to hire out some bikes and go see some of the things a bit further out of town. So James uh, survives getting round <laughs> one vending machine to the next. <laughs> you can only have it if you're the boss, which is why Carl can't have it. <laughs> Taste of success. <laughs> our basic plan was to head to Gion, the geisha district of town, and then gradually work our way up to Kiyomitsu Dera Temple, and basically try not to get lost along the way. Can't get lost if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> Can I have that one? <laughs> What's about to happen here? They've got up to a wedding, they're famous, so there's people running after them, so maybe they are famous. Maybe someone can leave a comment and tell us who they are, because we've got no idea. Another refuel. Five minutes, couldn't find one. Oh, this was cold. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> oh, you're in heaven. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> If I had to guess, which I do, I think it's people writing down their wishes and prayers on these little balls, yeah. leave them here at the shrine, and hopefully they come true. There you go, see? My guess was right. I wish that no one will ever die. Aww. <laughs> it's the only one I can read. <laughs> All right, we can follow this round and get to the temple. I was saying about getting lost. I thought we were just gonna walk up to a temple, but this street is gorgeous. Lots of cool little shops. Do you think, I think we'll be able to get this one <laughs> Polystyrene. Yeah. Loads of people dressed in the traditional clothes around here. There's probably some reason for that, but I don't know. <laughs> because they heard we were coming, so they've dressed up for us. Oh, they're just Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what they do. <laughs> we gradually worked our way up the vibrant street to the Kaiomitsu Dera Temple, which literally means pure water temple. It's named after the site's Otawa waterfall, which we unfortunately didn't manage to spot since the main hall was going through renovation. But apparently, there are three separate streams which, if you drink from them, provide three different benefits. One being longevity, another is success in studies, and a final one is a fortunate love life. Although the temple was founded back in 780 AD, the buildings we see today were constructed in the 17th century. And apparently, there's not a single nail used in the entire structure. Not only was it a beautiful temple to visit, but it also gave us fantastic views back down to Kyoto. Beautiful town, but it's exhausting walking around. So we've come to Curry House. Great smell, great curry. What was a good smell, good curry? Curry. Okay, today we're doing something a bit different, exploring Kyoto. 
but on bikes. So this is our bike for the day. <laughs> Oh. The guy running the store was a really fun guy. He had this old penny farthing cycling thing, and James had a go. And he's thinking, our oh, tourists, we're going to mess up. James smashed it. Absolutely smashed it. X BMXer. He's got a pedal, mate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I was useless. Like, no excuse, I was absolutely useless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not very good. I, I can show you how you're gonna do that. Okay. okay. This one, easy. Like this, see? Oh, what is <laughs> <laughs> And the speed, you have to do like this, see? <laughs> <laughs> see, looks easy. Yeah, it looks easy. You wanna do that? <laughs> easy, see? Easy. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. <laughs> you feel like a four-year-old again. No, no, keep, keep pedaling, okay? okay? So okay. keep pedaling. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. go. Yep, keep pedaling, pedaling. Go, keep pedaling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Once we got on our proper bikes, we began heading to the outskirts of town to explore some more sites, the first being the Golden Temple. So we are at Kinkakauji Temple, which is a Zen Buddhist temple, and apparently it's one of the most popular buildings in all of Japan. See if we can find a spot to take a picture. It's about three degrees today, and with the wind chill, no idea, but it's absolutely freezing. We are bloody knackered from that cycling, but we've made it to the bamboo paths. It's just beautiful. If you want to get a photo of this place with no one in, you're going to come out here a lot earlier than we did. But it's still gorgeous. Never seen anything like this before to me. Some crab on a stick. She just blowtorched it. <laughs> she got a crab. It's like... You will hate this. Me? Uh, <laughs> onwards. <laughs> Where are we going? So we know. Try and find some monkeys. There's one behind that camera. Hey. Well, we got a very long ride back. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for some more monkeys. These aren't snow monkeys, they're regular monkeys. <laughs> They're little things. Little things. <laughs> Tiki little monkeys. <laughs> this is a fair old hike up. Haven't seen any monkeys yet though. <laughs> oh, here they are. Whoa. It's a hell of a view. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out these monkeys are the same species as the ones we saw previously, and there's a troop of about 170 of them living here in the wild on Mount Arashiyama. Our hike was worth it for the view alone. We got a ride all the way back <laughs> along that river. We've got to go to the tower, basically. Oh yeah, that's where we are, aren't we? Ah. <laughs> it's like, wow, what a view. Oh god, we've got a long way to go. What a great day out. We're exhausted. <laughs> we went super fast around, yeah, but it's yes. so hot, right? No. Yeah. No? Yeah. So cold. <laughs> cold and hot. If you come to Kyoto, this is where you want to go. Get your bikes. <laughs> Thank you. It was a really fun, but also really cold day out. So we made our way back to the hostel to warm ourselves up. So, just walk in the toilet. Excited? Play not the music to me. 
Chapman Story Hour. So our last morning in Kyoto, which means we've come to the end of the first half of our trip, but we've got one last tourist site to see. This is the, supposed to be the most popular one in town, I think. We've come to the Fushimi Inari Shrine, which is a Shinto shrine famous for its thousands of red Tori gates. But first, we have to wash our hands and mouth as a symbolic purification before entering the shrine. You don't want to do it wrong. I think he was up on that or that one. <laughs> Here's one. It. Hands are freezing now. <laughs> the Tori Gate marks the approach and entrance to a Shinto shrine, and is supposed to represent the division between the physical and spiritual world. There's over 10,000 gates at this shrine, some of which are over 1,300 years old. We're walking this way, thinking this looks cool. Turn around, browse all the writings this way. to know what all this scripture means. I'm guessing it's scripture. Yeah, my guess was completely wrong. All of these gates have been donated by individuals and companies. And it turns out the writing on the back isn't anything spiritual. It's simply the donator's name and the date they made their donation. As we walk through, everyone's trying to politely get out of each other's photos. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> the path up the hill begins with two parallel walkways that everyone tries to get their photo on. However, the walkway actually continues winding all the way up the mountain where you can quickly lose 90% of the crowds. You probably can't see it on camera, but it's just started snowing as well. Just to make this place a little bit more picturesque. The mountain we're walking up is named after Inari, the Shinto god of rice. Foxes are thought to be Inari's messengers, which is why there's all these statues around the gardens. Well, I'm really glad we saved this one till last. Uh, it wasn't deliberate, just the way it worked out, but of all the shrines and temples we've done so far, <laughs> of which there's been many, this one's definitely my favorite. Great end to our time in Kyoto before we head to Osaka this afternoon. We've now reached the halfway point of our trip. It feels like we've been here a lot longer than two weeks because we've seen and done so much already. This is a beautiful little village here, gorgeous. We're really starting to find our feet and settle into traveling in Japan. We can't wait to head to the next town and see what other adventures await. <laughs> Welcome to Osaka. I'm here, pick me. I want to get off this ride. Well, this is what Nara's famous for. There's, there's deers everywhere. <laughs> we were originally just going to do three nights in Hiroshima, but we're now going to do five because there's actually tons to do here. Who wants to be uh, David? Yay! <laughs> well, there's a couple of things I wasn't expected to do in Japan. One was go on a pirate ship. We met some Japanese dudes who just so happened to work in Universal Studios and they've given us free passes. Welcome to Japan! Yeah. <laughs>